For those of us here on the front lines working in marine science, the Australian summer is a worrying time for us. Over the past five, six years, the hottest months have meant a lot of damage here on the Great Barrier Reef. This year we were really hopeful that with a La Nina year that we wouldn't have coral bleaching like we've seen. Maybe those temperatures will be a little bit cooler, but it looks like temperatures are warmer than usual and we're already seeing signs of coral bleaching. The Great Barrier Reef just experienced its hottest December, another record broken in a country seen as an outlier on climate action. Underwater, the effects of a warming world are yet again bringing a sickly fluorescence to the reef. This is an early warning sign. This suggests to us that the coral is starting to stress. And usually the next stages after that are the various stages of the whitening, the bleaching of the coral that leads to mortality. These are among the most biodiverse places on Earth but it's predicted that 90% of global reefs will be lost by the middle of the century. Desperate times leading scientists to trial desperate measures, manipulating the Earth's natural systems to avoid catastrophe. So we've been spraying for about an hour now and we've started to see here, you could see our plume building up and we've got that cloud layer that's just above 500 metres there. Five hours off the coast of Queensland, a team of scientists led by oceanographer Dan Harrison are trialling a concept that one day could create a cooling shade over these precious habitats. Yeah, you can see the plume building up out there. Oh, this is amazing. This is uh, exactly what we, what we dreamt of when we designed the experiment, that we would be able to get the plume in it and actually have very clear measurements of it getting ingested into the cloud. It's known as cloud brightening involving the spraying of seawater into the air, leaving tiny salt crystals suspended in the clouds. In theory, the clouds become thicker and able to reflect more heat away. We're testing whether, in fact, we, we can generate uh, enough of a sea salt uh, spray to actually start to, to make it all the way to cloud height and then to start to look at, at how it does influence the clouds. It's in conditions and on days like this that cloud brightening could be deployed on the reef at some point in the future. It's 30 plus degrees, the sun is relentless and the ocean waters here have been heating for months. And a few more days of this could trigger a bleaching event. We've continued the climb up to cloud base. We're uh, picking up a little bit of activity around about three kilometres. Uh, so you're intersecting the plume just below cloud base? That's correct, yes. Yeah. Dan's work is focused solely on the reef. But the results here will be watched by other scientists with ambitions to use the technology in areas like the Arctic to slow down the melting of the polar ice. We have clouds. But geoengineering on this scale would be highly contentious and risks undesirable consequences. Concerns about whether when you scaled the technology up there could be unintended environmental impacts are, are warranted and of course that's uh, a very large part of our research program is designed to look into those questions. They obviously have to be weighed against potential benefits like, like any other technology that we use. The need to cool and shading the water isn't the only challenge created by the climate crisis for decades, the water's been absorbing carbon from our emissions, making it more acidic. This is what we refer to as ocean acidification, the decrease in the ocean's pH. That means that for anything that needs to build a skeleton or a shell, like a coral or a beautiful mollusk, or even the bones in fish, it's harder to build those shells. Prime Minister Scott Morrison's government has refused to bow to international pressure to cut the country's emissions faster. But it has pledged one billion Australian dollars to saving the Great Barrier Reef. It's kind of like putting a, a band-aid on an arterial wound or a band-aid on a broken leg. These are last ditch efforts that aren't really addressing the number one problem that the Great Barrier Reef is facing. 
the choices facing us are very, very stark. If we don't have aggressive action on climate change and we keep having a business as usual type scenario where, where we keep emitting, then cloud brightening and all of the other ideas that we're looking at to try and help the reef are, are not enough. There's still hope, you know, the, the reef is still beautiful. We've, we've just been diving on it uh, and there's still a lot of life there. We're in a, a limited window of time where we can act now and maybe impact the outcome for the better. But if we don't act quickly, then, then that window will be lost.